Hi, everybody. Um, I wanted to introduce myself. I know some of you, a lot of you, have seen my videos before. Today, I want to be a little bit more serious about this channel, and I want to give you some information. We're going to start doing these videos on a regular basis. And I want to start by introducing myself. And my name is Lisa Larson. I run Pause Talk Animal Communication and Reiki. I'm an animal communicator. I'm a Reiki master, a shaman. I'm an author of Pause Talking, a course in communicating with animals. And this channel is going to be not so much about how to talk to animals, but but the things that I've learned about animals so that you can learn to understand your animals better and under understand animals in general better. So my the thing that's exciting about this is that I am going to have a partner in this and we lovingly call him podcast Pete. <laughs> and I'm going to introduce him to let him introduce himself. So Podcast Pete, take it away. This is Podcast Pete. I'm an animal communicator. Unfortunately, I only went one way. I always thought if I made a communication to them, that was it. We're done. Go over here. Sit down. Time to eat. You want to go out? Unfortunately, uh, you know, this didn't represent me as well as it possibly could have. And I've been lucky enough to be invited to join in this podcast. And we'll, we're all going to learn together, apparently. Uh, some of you will learn faster than I. And some of you will be at my speed, but will enjoy it. I'm glad to be here. Fabulous. Okay. Well, Pete, you want to take it away? We're going to start with... Um, what animal communication is. I think some some people don't really understand what animal communication actually is, what I do for a living. But we're going to start with that. So we're going to just give you an intro on animal communication. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm sure that a lot of people would love to know how you got started. I've known you for a long time. I've known your husband for a long time. I went to your wedding and I never knew how in depth and how proficient you are and have become in the realm of animal communication. Um, a lot of people, including me, um, don't really know what animal communication is other than um, our, you know, my history is limited. You know, I grew up with Rin Tin Tin and Lassie. They solve the episode every time. And, uh, you know, that's about it. But as far as really enjoying a furtive back and forth, I've never known it could exist, did exist. And, and yet I've known you for years. And apparently uh, now we're going to delve into that. And it's exciting. Very good. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because when we first met, I wasn't doing it. I was huh. doing Tarot. I knew how to do Tarot. And I think we had that connection, you know, because we both had that metaphysical connection. But yeah. I didn't start. We've known each other. Oh, my God. 30, 40 years. I hate to like that, we, 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 we met when we were just babies. We were just children. babies. <laughs> we were I was rough and in the womb. You helped me through it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, how I got started is that I had a cat named Cairo, and he was just the love of our lives. He, we found him on the street, and at one point we realized that he wasn't doing well, and we were going to have to, uh, well, I heard somebody the other day say we shouldn't say put them down, we should say lift them up because that's what we're doing. They're, we're lifting them up when we euthanize them. But we had to make that decision to lift him up and euthanize him 
for his own good so he wouldn't suffer. And I had called a woman who had helped me rescue him. And she immediately says, oh, well, I'm sending you an animal communicator. I'm sending you somebody over to help you. And at that point, I had heard about what it was. Like I said, I had done tarot. I had, you know, was into metaphysics and I'd seen it. I had even thought about getting an animal communicator for our cats. But like anybody else, I didn't know who to call, who to trust or anything else. And she came over and she was so helpful and gave us such peace and such comfort that after it was over, I thought, you know, if I could do that for other people, that would just be the greatest thing in the world. And it is. And we, she and I became friendly and she found out that I did Tarot and she found out we had other similarities. And she said, you know, if you can do that, you can do this. So I started reading uh, just, you know, my book wasn't out yet, obviously. <laughs> so I picked up a couple of books at that time. There were very few books out uh, about how to do it. And then I chose someone to take, I chose several people to take classes from. I've taken classes from Carol Gurney. I've taken classes from Marta Williams. And uh, little by little, I just practiced. I started a forum and just did, oh my God, I did five, six animals a day, five, six days a week. And I would just sit and tell them what it was. And it wasn't anything serious, but it was, I did that for about three years before people started telling me, you know, you're really good. You really need to be doing this professionally. Uh, and after that, we had made a move and I, I, I used to be a college professor and I lost my job in the crash of 2008 and just never looked for another job because people just at that point, it was, it was almost like it was meant to be because people at that point just started calling me and I've been doing it ever since. So it's it's just something I love. I specialize in animals and sp speaking to animals in spirit because I'm a psychic medium for humans as well. And, and, and Cairo, I always credit Cairo for helping me push me in that direction. So your profession blossomed and like, like any other beautiful rose, there has to be ingredients, there has to be reasons, there has to be factors, there has to be the furtive earth, there has to be the sun. There has to be the rain. There has to be hardships. There has to be the little struggle is good for a plant. There has to be reasons why the rose is. And in this case, what would you say are the reasons for your business and your profession and your help with other people to blossom? So in other words, the, the reasons that people call me? Yes. Yeah, uh, th for a number of reasons. Well, like I say, I talk to animals in spirit. So a lot of people call me after their animals have passed. Some call me to help their animals pass because I work with animals who are, who are fatally ill and seriously ill. Uh, but they also call me for behavioral problems. They call me if, they're, if their animal is having a problem with inappropriate elimination or um aggression or anxiety uh things like that things to help the animal feel better helping people understand their animals better i i had one woman who called me she had she had, had a horse and she had him for about a year and a half and this horse was just kind of really agitated all the time and just angry all the time and as i was talking to him i asked him well your mom really loves you and wants wants to have a relationship with you and he kind of you know did one of these things like yeah oh yeah and i said you don't think so and he goes well i, I said doesn't she come and feed you doesn't she brush you and he goes yeah she comes and feeds me and brushes me and cleans out my stall and it's all like a chore for her 
She comes, she does it, and it's all a chore for her. And as I was on the phone telling her this, I could hear her start to cry on the other end of the line. And she said, you know, he's exactly right. How am I expected to, how do I expect him to love me and show me that kind of compassion when I'm not doing the same to him? So I gave her the suggestion of going in and doing it with a purpose, you know, brushing him with a purpose of I'm doing this out of love, feeding him, I'm doing this out of love, and then just sitting with him and sitting in his energy and connecting with his energy. And a couple of months later, she emailed me and she says, I have a whole new horse on my hands. We have a a completely different relationship. So that's so very satisfying in that respect. My hope is that I help people understand animals through their perspective so that they can look through their eyes. I think it's amazing that that, that people have an opportunity to even understand that this sort of level of beautiful communicating even exists. We've all been around animals. We've all have considered ourselves communicators, even though it's just been one way send. And I hope you get it. And I tried and good enough and I got to go do something else. And, you know, I, you know, to, to understand that there can be an interchange, to understand there could be a deepening and to, to feel that there can be a furtherance uh, uh, of a relationship with a non-speaker, hmm. uh, you know, it, it, this is, this is all so very new to me and, and I'm sure to a lot of people. So it's exciting that uh, this can be not only explained, but also maybe illustrated and maybe even demonstrated and possibly help people get a little deeper into their love of their animals. Absolutely. And it's interesting you said uh, about a non-speaker because I had uh, spoken with animal, an animal and spirit for this one woman and she took it to the next step and she called me later on she was so happy with the reading she called me later on and asked me she said you know i have a a son a 32 year old son who's nonverbal and autistic and she wondered if i could connect with him and so i i said sure i'll give it a try and and i did and it and it helped immensely you know, help her helped her understand what her son needed, what what made him happy, and and all of that. So yeah, I mean, this is I, I look at this as something that transcends species. It's it's all of our spirituality and and the connection and the love that that we that we want to connect with other souls with. Well. It's an acceptance that it can be done. And many, many of us haven't even ever considered it. So this is uh, obviously a, a well of opportunity here. Um, as far as how to do it, that's that's going to be in your hands. As far as how well it can be done, that's going to be in your hands. And just I'm, I'm glad to be sharing it with you. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank now, this you. book can be purchased where? Uh, it can be purchased at Amazon in hardback and ebook. It can be purchased on ebook, on Apple Books, and on Barnes and Noble. And and le- yeah, let me let me tell you a little bit about the book because uh, what I really love uh, about the feedback that I've gotten from this book is that even though it was written primarily for people who want to learn to speak to animals. I've gotten so much feedback from people who don't necessarily want to to speak to animals, but want to understand animals better. And because of the stories that I put in there, I've gotten feedback that it just really helped them understand better. And I got a wonderful uh, comment back from a client a few weeks ago. One of her cats had passed 
And this was a long-term relationship. And believe me, I feel like I develop relationships with the animals as well as the humans, as well as their guardians and their, their, their moms and dads. But anyway, after the session was over and she was really pleased, she said, I just needed to tell you that one of the reasons I was able to make the call to the vet was because I had picked up your book. She says, I, I read your book when it first came out three years ago, but I remembered the chapter on animals and spirit and the transition and helping them transition in euthanasia. And I went back and read it and reading that gave me the insight and the courage to call the vet at the right time. And that just made me so <laughs> pleased. I, I felt so honored that, that I could help her in that way. It's a very difficult call to make. It, it's a call uh, and it's a decision that I'm sure everybody needs help with in some way. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason I asked where the book could be gotten is because I'm halfway through it. I don't know that I'm a communicator yet. Uh, even though I've always wanted to communicate well with the quadrupeds of the world, et cetera. <laughs> However, what I've gathered, uh, what I'm gathering from the book now being a little over halfway through it is a humaneness mm. and, and to basically center and concentrate and dwell and affix and settle upon humaneness is quite, quite a beautiful position that I'm sure animals feel and we as people in our busy schedules don't stop long enough to consider it often enough. No. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I, yeah, no, I don't think that we do. I, I think so, so many times people just, they take animals for granted. We don't even understand why they named the place the Humane Society until I'm reading this book and I realize, aha. It had to be named that because if you're humane and, and you have humaneness, then you're likely going to enjoy learning how to communicate better. Yeah. It's and, and this segues into talking about things that we will talk about in the future. I mean, we have a list a mile long of topics that we want to share with all of you guys. We're going to do a little series about taking a few chapters from my book. I would love that. And we're going to talk about that. And I love that you're that you're right in the middle of reading it so that we can we can talk about that. And I also want to know want you guys to know that I'm I teach classes as well. So I've got classes coming up and we'll as we we put out these these podcasts, video casts, uh, we'll we'll let you know and we'll put the information down in the and wherever this is <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> Frankly, whether I communicate uh deeply and well or not uh, is going to be something that's going to have to just remain to be seen but uh, i have learned so much about humaneness and mm -hmm. i've learned so much about the extra consideration of the extra things that affect the union that affect them individually that affect us individually uh you know i i think it's going to be um something that will open my heart open my mind and my intelligence, but also uh, hopefully open myself to them, you know. Uh, uh, and, and that's the whole point. Beautiful beings. That's the whole point. And I love the way that you said that. Thank you. So I hope that the people watching, I hope that that's what they get out of this too. So um, I think it's probably time for us to close here. This is, honestly, this was a test run for us, but if I can clean it up a little bit, we <laughs> I will put it up. Yeah, I think it went well. And I am looking forward to talking to all of you guys again, podcast Pete, with podcast Pete. Um, I'm really, I really hope that if you guys enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button so that you will maybe the bell so that you know that when we 
put other videos out and it may take us a little bit longer to get started but we're going to try our best to get things out every every week or every couple of weeks and uh and and also if you have questions if you have topics about animals that you would like us to to address please put them in the comments please feel free to comment and let us know what you're thinking what you'd like to hear and uh we really appreciate that you coming around and and joining us today and i'm lisa larson this is podcast pete i guess i have to give myself a nickname of some sort now because podcast well, pete is such know, a cool name so far you're a gift and a companion to animals and now you're <laughs> going to be a gift and companion to all of us newbies Okay, very good. Well, thank you so much, Pete. I love you. And love you, I will look forward to doing this again. And thank you all for joining us. I will look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you for writing this. Bye bye. Yeah. This is podcast Pete. And now we've come to my favorite part of the segment when I get to ask questions about what's on my mind and possibly on the minds of others about the animal experience. Number one, having started this book, I realize I've been more animals in the book than I have been the people that had the animals, as far as possibly having feelings of maybe being a little bit abandoned, being a little bit neglected, being a little bit uh, dealt with sternly when maybe some understanding could have uh, benefited me better. Uh, and, and again, you know, we come back and, and we'll come back again and again to humaneness. Uh, I have to consider that animals uh, in their very nature are possibly born and created humanely and they're humane. And maybe we have to get out of our own little small worlds sometimes and join them in it. Uh, you know, I mean, I've met well, uh, you know, with animals uh, I've tried to give them gifts. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I figure that's a good entree into possibly a bond, uh, but I had no clue that they actually can communicate back on levels other than, uh, do I look hungry? Because hungry? I am. <laughs> well, you know, what you said was just is so important about you being the animal, because that is exactly what I am, what I strive to do in helping my clients understand animals' experiences through their eyes, through their perspective. And it's so important because when you do that, when you put yourself in that place, because I will do that a lot of times to help people understand, think about, like I'll say, think about if you were living with someone and you had a wonderful life with them and then they met somebody else and then you got shoved off into another bedroom or you got shoved off to live in the garage, how would that make you feel? E, not so good, you know? So if we put ourselves in the, in the positions of how we treat animals with most times without even thinking, then all of a sudden they become more sentient to us. They become, those emotions become more real to us because they don't experience emotions any differently than we do. They just express them differently. I suppose that's really the key and the lesson is that we have built in potentiality and the possibility of more access to them to enjoy more things with them on levels other than are you hungry? Do you want to go out um, and stop barking? I've got to go to sleep. So or or <laughs> stop whining or whatever. Uh, and, and and this interaction is you know, is new to me. Uh, you know, I, I was always happy with what I was doing, not realizing I wasn't doing anything. I was just kind of like walking the same path, but never interacting and, and enjoying uh, a deeper communication.
Yeah. And that deeper communication is so important. And it's what I realize. It's, it's what, what I call a soul contract. And a soul contract is when we're on the other side in spirit, we make agreements with one another that we're going to come back into the, into a physical lifetime and, and teach each other things through our experiences, our relationships, our behaviors. And so often it is my firm belief, and, and I'm not saying that mine is the only right belief by any choice, by any stretch, but is my firm belief having done this, this work that animals come to us for a reason. They come to teach us things. They are our teachers and we are theirs. So when I talk to somebody, when I talk to an animal on the other side, one of the, the, the main questions I ask on each side is, what did you come into your parents' life to teach them? And what did your parent teach you in this lifetime? What did you come into this lifetime to learn? Yeah. And, and it's, it becomes, so much deeper and as a as a psychic medium as well because i talk to humans on the other side what i find is that with with a mediumship reading with humans a lot of the time the evidence is the message itself because human lives are so large we've got work we've got travel we've got friends, we've got family, extended family, and all of these other things that we do. But when you think about it, animals, we are their entire life. We are their entire world. So I can go into an animal reading and I can get information But that will be, I can do that fairly quickly because their lives are so small. But once, and I'm talking about talking about to an animal in spirit, but once I've gotten past that evidential information that helps the person know that I'm talking to their animal, there are times when animals can give the most amazing spiritual messages. And I I did a talk on this at a spiritualist church and I can link that someplace here or here, wherever it is on YouTube that I do that. Um, But they, they sometimes have the most spiritual messages that apply to everybody that can, can apply not just to their person, but to everybody, because it is my belief. And again, I don't, I don't put my, my belief above anybody else's. I know that everybody has a lot of different belief systems, but give, given this work, it is my belief that in the whole process of reincarnation, we have to be a human before we can come and become an animal most people think of it the other way around most people think you have to become an animal first but i think animals are more spiritual so i think we have to live that 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 kind of down and dirty human experience before we can rise ourselves up to to have the spiritual experience of becoming an animal in a in a reincarnated sense well the term reward is, is going to assume some new dimensions um, from what the norm is, is as far as just the, not the superficial, but the surficial, uh, as far as things and and places and uh, uh, treats and, uh, you know, and, and, and comfort, because communication is a whole nother level above and beyond that, as, as far as something that rewarding. Yeah, really is. So let's let's stop it here. Um, if you want to hear more about animals, if you are enjoying listening to me and podcast Pete, uh, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, join us again. And we will be talking about all sorts of different 
topics and you can if you're interested in my book you can get it at amazon i'll put some links down below for where you can get the book and and if you and please comment if you if you if this inspires you what you think about animals if it inspires you in any way please let us know what you're thinking and uh and let us know some other topics that you would like to hear from this this right here was just kind of a, a back and forth that we wanted to put out there but we're going to have some very focused topics uh some from the book some just from my experiences and all all hoping to give you the experience of of helping you understand animals better so thank you pete i love you as always and thank you guys for being here we really really appreciate it and we will look forward to seeing you next time lisa i love you and we're going to enjoy learning this together yes we will love you Bye-bye.